I've chosen to uh, do the Sunday school lesson. If you look in the uh, in front of you, you can find the quarterly, what we call the quarterly. It's found on page 32. Called to Proclaim the Resurrection is the title of the Sunday School lesson today. It's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28. Matthew's Gospel is one of the earliest Bible uh, Gospels written. It's one of the earliest written somewhere around 50 AD or earlier. Matthew is the only one that has written some of the accounts that we have that we'll be looking at today. paperwork laid out here so I can okay now I'm with you all right in the end of the Sabbath it began to dawn toward the first day of the week what's the first day of the week Sunday that's like today Sunday there was already preparations made for the anointing of the Lord's body it wasn't completely done uh, because the Sabbath was drawing uh, close, so they had to postpone it, and these ladies are going to pick up uh, where the others had started. We need to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together today. We ask you, Lord, to uh, illuminate our hearts and minds to receive your precious word today. Help us to see things that we need to see and understand the things that we see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There was two groups of ladies. Look, the book of Luke is a little bit more uh, chronologically uh, uh, written. So there was other two groups. Matthew mentions this group, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, that is not Mary's last name. Many of you probably thought that Mary Magdalene was the last name. That is not her last name, but we call her Mary Magdalene. Does anybody else know anything about Mary Magdalene? That's right. It's from the town of Magda. This is, this is, she is mentioned after the village that she came from. And so that is really not her last name. It merely mentions the village in which she came from. And that's how we come up with Magdalene. Uh, the other Mary, there's, it's, it's still out on many of theologians don't, co don't quite agree that it was Mary, the mother of Jesus, though it was a high probability that it was Mary, the mother of Jesus, also the Mary of, of James and Joseph. But uh, they haven't all agreed that it was Mary, the mother of Jesus. They came while it was yet dawning, first day of the week. They came to see the sepulcher. You have to understand, they still not grasp the idea that Jesus was going to resurrect. Now, he had told them in many times, in many places, and we're going to look at the scriptures that he had made mention and yet they still did not get the message that he was going to resurrect. Verse 2 said, Behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now, Jesus resurrected sometime in the very early morning hours. We don't know the exact time. The earthquake, I think, happened probably at the time that the angel probably also descended. Some think the earthquake happened when Jesus ascended. That's, that's surely a possibility. Uh, we know that any time that uh, whenever the Lord had con in connections with the earth, many times the earth did tremble. Many times there were earthquakes. It's very possible that when the earthquake, Jesus did, did rise at that time. We don't, all, we don't know for sure. But there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now, we're, it's mentioned before that in um, 27, verse 60. In fact, I'll read that, and then I'll try to explain it to you as best I can. Uh, chapter 27, Matthew, verse 60, uh, verse 59. Let's just go up there. When Joseph had taken the body... This is Joseph of Arimathea. He wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. He laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of rock. He rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. 
Now, it says he wrote it. Many other times we read it took more than just one man to roll it. It's believed that this stone that was, was, was very huge was actually on, on a slope. And they had like a wedge on it. And anybody could pull the wedge out and the stone would roll in its place. But it would take more than one person to take the stone away. But it's believed the stone was very huge. It was in a little trough in front of the opening. And, and there was simply a wedge there. And you just simply needed to pull the wedge out and the stone would roll in front of the, the tomb. So that makes it simpler for you to understand that one man, Joseph, put the stone in place. But then the stone was sealed and guarded. And we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Only Matthew, uh, Matthew brings that out uh, more so than any of the other Gospels. Uh, the angel sat upon it. That's interesting. Not only did he roll the stone back, but he sat upon it. It shows his authority. His authority over all earthly things. Immense authority. He has authority and he has power over many things the Lord has allowed him to do. And one angel, it's amazing what, this, what the strength of one angel can do. And this one angel was simple for him to roll the stone away. And he sat upon it to show his authority. And then as those that, that came, it's, uh, well, we, we, uh, the writer, Matthew, wants to give us a little instruction about the angel. Verse 3, his countenance was like lightning. His raiment was white as snow. The white is a color of purity. And it certainly is a picture of triumph. Have any of you ever been to sight and sound and seen the, how the angels are usually shown? They show bright apparel and bright lights. And that's very much what they're showing, what the author is here trying to share with us. That the angel had a color of purity. It was white. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became his dead man. Well, the keepers are the guards. They are the guards. They're the soldiers. They're the Roman soldiers. It's possible. They were the same Roman soldiers that uh, had part in the crucifixion. We're not sure on that, but it's possible. It could have been the same Roman soldiers that may have had part in the crucifixion. But it says, for the fear of the angel, the keepers shaked like the earthquake and became his dead men. They were paralyzed with fear. And you imagine seeing something like this, the earth shaking and the stone rolling and this angelic creature coming and, and, they, and they beheld this, they seen this. They fell to the ground like they, were, like they had died, they, like they fainted from fear. And then verse five says, and the angel answered and said unto the woman, fear ye not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. They knew, they knew who she was looking for. They, there's a lot of things that they know. They don't understand redemption because they're not redeemed. They can't sing the same songs that we sing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus because they can't be redeemed. Verse 6, he is not here. For he is risen. The angel was telling her, he is not here. He has risen as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Now he's beckoning to the lady to come in and come into the tomb and see where he had, had laid. Probably there was still blood laying there from what drained out of his body. He was just blood soaking. He had linen cloth over him. But his, probably was, his blood was probably still there where he laid. And the angel said, come in and see where he laid. This is where he laid. And now, it takes, now I'd like to read the portions of scripture where many times Jesus said, as he said, he was going to rise. And the angel is reminding her, as he had said. And so let's go to where he said this in Matthew chapter 16. It's one of the first references, Matthew 16 and 21. From that time forth, he began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go on to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. 
even as many times as he has shared this, they still didn't quite get it. Next reference is chapter 17. If you're wondering where I'm getting this, I'm following the cordly. If you're looking in your cordly, that's where I'm getting these references. Chapter 17 and verse 23. 17 and 23. Therefore is a kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which took account of his servants. Oh, I'm in the wrong verse. That's 18, Roger. Back up one. There we go. And they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceedingly sorry. That's chapter 17, verse 23. Now on to chapter 20 and verse 19. 20 and 19. And shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge. What's the scourging? The flogging. What's the flogging? That's where his back ripped off. Ripped all up from the leather, from the leather where they had sharp stones tied to the ends of these pieces of leather. How many stripes did he get? Anybody remember? 39. How many major diseases are there? 39 major diseases. And so it says to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Chapter 17, verse 19. All right, I mean chapter 20, verse 19. Then we go into Mark's gospel. The next reference is into Mark's gospel. Mark 14, 28. Mark 14 and 28. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. Isn't that what the angel said? Isn't that what the angel said? You're supposed to go into Galilee as Jesus told you, that's where he's going to meet you. You're to go into Galilee. Why Galilee? That's where Jesus' ministry started. That's where his ministry began, in Galilee. It started in the northern part of Israel, in Galilee. Okay. Let's see. John 2.19. John 2.19. 2.19. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now, they were thinking it was, the, it was the actual temple. They were actually thinking it was the, the, the building temple. How is he going to do that? How is he going to destroy it and raise it up? Well, they didn't realize he was speaking of his body as the temple. He spoke of his body being the temple, not the building that was in Jerusalem. That was uh, beautiful, magnificent. It was a beautiful structure. But Jesus was mentioning his, his body. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. John 2.19. Then John 10.19 is the last reference that we have that Jesus is referring to himself being raised. 10 and 18. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. We saw this in the script that the youth did this morning. He had power to lay his body down and power to take it up. He laid his body down because he took our sins on his cross. And not only did the sins of, the, of, of our sins hold him to that tree, his love for us held, held, him, held him there to that tree. He loved us. And so he died for us. Verse 7, you all with me? You're, how many are with me yet? Verse 7, all right. Go quickly, tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. Where are they at? They're still back in Jerusalem, cowered under some hole or, or bush. They're still afraid. They're still afraid. They're, they're, they're afraid that what happened to Jesus will happen to them. They're afraid of the Roman authorities might come and do the same to them as they did to Jesus. So they're cowered. They're afraid. They're hiding. They're in hiding. That's why the angel said, go quickly. Why? They needed, they needed a word of comfort. They needed to hear it. And when they heard it, they didn't believe it anyway. Let's read on. Go quickly. Tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. 
And so they make their way back. And while they're making their way, we know Jesus meets them. Let's read verse 8. They departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. And verse 9, as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, seeing, saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet, and they worshiped him. Now, obviously, they must have bowed to, to hold him at his feet. When they seen him, they bowed to him on the ground and held him at his feet. Then this is what Jesus said, verse 10. He said unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. So now why the difference? What's the difference here? Why didn't he say, go tell my disciples? Why did he call them my brethren? Why is there a change here? Anybody have a thought about that? I'm getting dry. I got to get something to drink. Anybody have a thought about that? Why did he call them my brethren? What changed? Yes. That's right. You hit it right on. We're, did you know that we're all his brothers? Do you know that? Even the ladies can be brothers. They can be brethren. We're all his brethren. All him, who embrace him are brethren. That's right. How do you like that? Huh? <laughs> you didn't know what was coming out of his mouth, but it was right. <laughs> it was right. Thank you. That's exactly right. We're all his brethren. <laughs> you know what he did? <laughs> That's good. Thank you very much. Man, you were paying attention. All right. So they were to go to Galilee. Jesus' ministry began in Galilee. And there you will see me, they said. Verse 11. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came unto the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. Now Matthew is the only one that has this account. He is the only one that records this. What's this about? Who, what's the watch? Y'all know what the watch is. We had the skit this morning. That's the soldiers. That's the soldiers. They're considered the watch or the guard. They're the guard. Now, what happened is, and Matthew's the only one that records it. Matthew says the religious leaders went and Pilate, to Pilate and said, now look, we need to have this tomb sealed. We've got to have it sealed, and we have to have guards. Because they said he's going to rise the third day, and, and, and just so that we make sure that don't happen, we're going to have it, this uh, tomb sealed and guarded, as though that was going to do the trick. Yeah. But that was what their intention was, and that's exactly what they did. They went to Pilate, and they said, we need some guards, we need to have the tomb sealed, and we need to have guards. Uh, didn't do any good anyway. Because you see, when the angel rolled the stone back, it wasn't to let Jesus out. It was to let the ladies in to see that Jesus had already been gone. Jesus didn't have to have the stone rolled back to get out. He got out on his own. He went right through the stone. It was only open so that we could see in and see he wasn't there. But Matthew records the watch or the soldiers who became fainted or, or fainted when the earthquake appeared at the tomb. These are the ones that were at the tomb. And so they went into the city and they, and they wanted to talk to the chief priest. Why didn't they go to Pilate? Why didn't they, does anybody know why they didn't go to Pilate? Why did they go to chief priest? That's right. The soldiers would have been executed for falling asleep at the tomb. If they would have made mention of that, they'd have been executed. So they knew they couldn't go back to Pilate. They couldn't tell Pilate. But they went to the chief priest. Of course, when the chief priest heard what they had to say, they had all the money they could get to tell them to keep their mouth shut. This is the first fake news that started right here. This is first fake news. Yeah, they were paid to keep their mouth shut. Actually, they were paid to say if anybody asked, tell them that the disciples came and stole the body. That's what they said. Fake news. So read it for yourself. Let's go on a little further. 
Uh, where were we? Verse 11, verse 12. When they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money to the soldiers. Yep, that was to keep their mouths shut. Oh, wow. They didn't. You notice that the elders and the chief priests didn't question what they saw. They pretty much knew exactly what happened, but they, they knew now they've got to keep this hush-hush. This has to be hush-hush. Because maybe, 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 we did, maybe we did crucify the Son of God. Well, at that point in time, I'm sure they knew they did. Now, they have, now it's called cover-up. Now it's a cover-up. Now it's a cover-up. Here it starts. And they had money. And they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers to keep their mouths shut. Verse 13, saying ye, his disciples came by night. This is what, if anybody asked you, this is, this is the story. Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were sleeping. See, there it is. That's fake news. Verse 14, and if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure him as well. And then verse 15 says, and they took the money and did as they were told or taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews even on to this day. And Matthew was talking about his day. Well, guess what? It continued long, long further than Matthew's day. Even in our day, there was people that still do not believe that Jesus was the son of God, that he rose from the dead. That yes, perhaps maybe his disciples did steal his body. Yes, well, then where is it? But Jesus' body did not see corruption. It did not suffer corruption. I like what the, uh, what the, the cordly says in, uh, in the leader's cordly. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was another one. I was just reading the conclusion of another. And that was pretty good. You should have had that one. Uh, all right, here we go. Hang on, we're getting there. Paul's declaration, and, and uh, Wayne read part of it. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of them that slept. Do you understand what that means? That means that all the souls, all the souls from the Old Testament, they had to wait to go to heaven until Jesus went to heaven. Jesus was the first fruits of them that slept. So all the souls from Adam until the time that Jesus went to heaven, them souls had to wait till Jesus went first because he had to be the first fruits of them that slept. And that's what Paul is talking here about. Christ has risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. The sleeping has to do with all those that were dead in Christ. All those that were dead in Christ from Adam until Jesus went to heaven. He was the first fruits of them that slept. All right. Here's a little thing I'll read with you and then we're going to go home. The phrase fake news became part of the vocabulary during the 2016 campaign. Certain outlets created stories with no basis to further their agendas. There's many people today that still getting people to see the truth seems to be a slow process. It calls for prayer and patience. Even Jesus' own disciples were not convinced at first. When the, when the women went back and told them, it seemed to them there was words of idle tales. And they had to go see for themselves. They didn't believe what the ladies said. It seemed as idle tales. They believed them not, Luke 24, 11. And the apostle Thomas, he said, except I shall see his hands and the print of his nails, put my finger into the print of his nails and thrust my hand to his side, I will not believe, John 20 and 25. No one, and neither the women nor the disciples, was anticipating that Jesus would arise. They were not spending those days planning how they could perpetuate a hoax. Paul's declaration was very clear, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Fake news? No. Actual news? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. 
Okay, well, let's stand. It's time to go home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Blessed Savior. Father, we are indeed grateful and thankful for this wonderful Easter day. It's a time to, that we celebrate your risen. Lord, we're thankful that you indeed live, and you live today, Lord, and you give life to each and every one of us. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit, Lord, and for the way in which the Holy Spirit fills us and refreshes us, Lord. And Father, today, I pray that we'll continue, Lord, this message and this celebration as the ladies who went forth to proclaim the news that you are not in the tomb, but you are alive. And may we continue this news, Father, as we continue to go forth and share this same news that indeed you are alive. You are alive. And those of you who want to, can, they can place their trust in you and they can be saved and they can be forgiven of their sins because, Lord, you have not suffered your Holy One to see corruption, but you've raised him from the dead, even as you said. We thank you and we praise you and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise that you are so deserving of. You are so deserving of in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Lord bless you.